What's up, everybody? My name is Lee. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition, and you are tuned in to Kind of Neat. Thank you for tuning in. As always, my voice is a little better this week. I'm getting over my sickness. Uh, to be honest, it took about two fucking weeks. I, I, I get I get sick, and then I just stay sick. If this is your first time tuning in, and you're tuning in to hear the conversation with Buttress, be patient. The beginning of the show, I just talk a little bit of shit. And then you'll hear a beat and then the conversation starts. If you're listening on YouTube, there is a link that tells you when it starts. If you are a weekly listener, this is the part where I remind you that if you aren't supporting the podcast, you should just support the podcast. It's the holiday season. You're feeling giving. You know what I mean? You want to just put a couple of bucks in me and Ben stocking stuffer. You can go to patreon.com. That's P A T R E O N.com slash kind of neat. And you can just pledge $1 per episode. The way that that works is don't give us a one-time donation. We want you to support us a little bit every month, just like you do Netflix or HBO go or whatever. Just give us like, you know, a dollar per episode. The most that'll ever be is $4 per month. And And um, it would help us greatly. It would help keep us alive. And we appreciate it. So um, what has been going on? Let's see. A few things. As I've been telling you guys the past couple of weeks, I've been uh, once I hit 35, I started having like my just pre midlife crisis a little bit and was like, dude, Lee, you're fat as fuck. Like it's time to start losing weight. And so I had been walking around at about 230 pounds for the last few years, um, fluctuating a little bit here and there. Um, and now I, lo- I told you guys previously that I lost about 15 and, and now I've lost about, um, you know, I don't know. Between three and five more pounds because I started this new program. Um, So I'm down to about 211, 212, depending. And um, I started this thing. I guess I'm going to shout it out because I got it for free and it was an expensive thing. But my buddy that I'm going to Japan with to go snowboarding, who, which I talked about, it's, it's my buddy from uh, Australia. This is very convoluted, the way the internet and the world works nowadays. Like, you keep in contact with people that don't live in other countries and shit, but um, this guy, th- my friend Dylan has become a very close confidant of mine, even though he lives on the other side of the world where the toilets flush the other way. Um, and he is a web designer, and he designed this guy's site. I, I don't know how the fuck to say it, to be honest. I think it's Zako Body Pro. It's Z-O-C-C-O Body Pro. And it's a great exercise program. So if any of you guys are looking to get fit, I'm just giving them a free plug because uh, they hooked me up. And so I'm trying to hook them up with a little free promotion. Um, But basically, it's kind of like CrossFit without all the cultiness, I think. Because here's the thing is like I I watch people. I've watched people like CrossFit and I'm like, oh, that seems like an effective workout. The thing that I don't like is um, what seems to be like the crazy like group think mentality if you're a crossfit listener and this is offending you just mute it for a second but bear with me if you're a regular fat lazy person like me then like you see those guys and you're like wow they are really fucking hyped up it's like this kind of crazy uh uh mantra that they have of just like working very super hard and everyone being pumped on like the team effort but me I'm a lone wolf, baby. You know, I just like to be by myself. I like to go to work out. I don't like to talk to nobody. I like to have headphones in, et cetera, et cetera. And so this, I feel like I found the CrossFit kind of uh, exercise program without having to deal with people or um, without having to, you know, be all rah, rah, shish, goomba about it. And it's been working good. It's like you have to, da- I had to download this like program and I have to like plug it in. I'm, I'm, um, you know, like type in all the exercises and then it's, it's like, uh, intensity interval training stuff. So it's like, you know, you work out for 40 seconds and then take a 20 second break and then 40 seconds and then 20 second break for 20 minutes at a time. And it's all these crazy like calisthenics. The, I just got through with the first month of it. And, um, I wake up at six 30 every morning and go to the gym, which I usually do. in I usually go in the afternoons, but since I've been trying this, I'm trying to do it in the morning. Just knock it out of the way and or knock it out uh, early and it only takes 20 minutes and it's crazy because I haven't lifted a single weight in a month and lost like four or five pounds ish, you know, and um, and so there are three phases to it. I just finished phase one, which is the first month. The second month I was like, I'll start weight training a little bit again, but it's still just 20 minute workouts and um, I don't know, man, I think I'm going to be pretty fucking buff afterwards. I'm pretty hyped. 
<laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, I sound like such a bro jock right now, but that was all a plug. But it was also just like, literally, that's the only thing I'm doing in my life right now is like working out. And I'm also old as fuck and everything on me hurts. Uh, it turns out that I have like turf toe. Um, so I have to like ice my toe all the time. I've been thinking about taping it up before I go work out because it hurts so fucking bad. Um, that just could be from bad shoes. Uh, I also have um, shin splints really fucking fucking bad right now i never like really ran track as a kid or anything but i always hear my track friends talking about shin splints and it's it just basically feels like the muscles are like ripping off the inside of your shin it fucking hurts and so i've been sitting around icing my shins all the time because i'm old turns out that could also be from bad shoes so maybe i'm only telling you this because i need a new pair of shoes who the fuck knows that ties back into patreon account go donate i'm just kidding what also happened is uh, i went it, this is how, you know, it's getting super official. Went to my girl's house for uh, my, my girl's parents house for Thanksgiving and they just kind of let us take over their kitchen and I cooked my first Thanksgiving turkey. And let me tell you, it fucking turned out great. The combination of being obsessed with like the Internet and looking up uh, just like on, like just looking up recipes online and shit and then also watching like Top Chef and Food Network for like a million years. It turns out that that shit just kind of like rubs off on you in a very practical way. And I cooked turkey very traditionally, put uh, butter and parsley and shit and garlic under the skin and on top of the skin and just basted that mother or like just uh, just baked that motherfucker, roasted it, I guess. You know, did it real hot for the first hour or mm, yeah first hour cooked it at 500 lowered it down to 350 cooked it for another two this thing came out succulent and fucking juicy and i'll tell you what i also like carved it very perfectly like i I went in with a plan carving that bastard and it it just was like delightful juicy aromatic good turkey and i felt like a man i felt like i walked into that room a boy and i walked out a man and I impressed her parents and they were happy with my turkey bre- with my turkey and how uh, moist and juicy the breast was. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll tell you the, the real trick to it though, guys, is to let that meat rest. Once you get it out of the oven, you got to let it rest. Don't, don't just start cutting that bastard up. Let it rest. Cause what happens is all them juices start they just start uh, vacuuming back up into the meat and they start just dispersing themselves evenly throughout all the striations of the muscles. And that's what makes it juicy. You got to let it rest. Be patient after you get it out. Anyway, last thing I will say is for the last few months, I've been doing this kind of like trial period thing with uh, Skull Candy where I've been creating content for their website. So if you guys just can't get enough of me every Wednesday on kind of neat. What you can do is go to Skull Candy's website and uh, I've been writing articles and taking pictures for them once a month. Uh, and I'll start posting links to the articles that I write on our kind of neat um, Twitter. Uh, but I've done one about Sesh Hollow Water Boys, who we've had on the show and hopefully who we might have on a, a few of the members again. Um, I've had, uh, I did one about Ugly God. Um, water water i did another one about pell who's a former guest and then my most recent one was about goth boy click and that one seems to be going pretty hard on the internet um so yeah i'm just like writing uh, pieces for them and taking a bunch of photos for them of artists who I think are dope, um, either at a show or just kind of like hanging out with them in LA and, and, and there's like a written interview. And so if you enjoy the content of kind of neat, but hate my voice and would rather read then that is probably the place to go. Um, so yeah, check out skull candy and I'll be posting more in the upcoming year. Cause it looks like we're going to keep doing it. So that is pretty tight. Other than that website design coming along should be launching sometime early in the new year and i think uh i think it's really going to revolutionize revolutionize a lot of the stuff that we're doing and hopefully put some new fire in my ass to like be more productive with kind of neat um because i I want the shit to pop so um thank you guys for following along as always and without any further ado here is my conversation with buttress I bet your followers are like super like hardcore about you. Yeah. 
I don't know. Some of them, I guess. Maybe. I really don't know. Like, it's hard to gauge people from the internet, you know? Yeah, totally. What tends to happen with me, um, particularly with woman artists, but also with people that have hardcore followings, is they're like... You asshole, you didn't even let her talk at all. Like, <laughs> you're a misogynist. Don't speak over the woman. Yeah. And they're like, and you didn't even do any research. That's another thing. I don't do any research. So I don't uh-huh. know. I know next to nothing about you other than what I've learned from watching your YouTube videos. Okay. So that was me giving my spiel of like, hey, if you're tuning in to hear Buttress talk, like, don't, <laughs> don't judge him. Don't judge me. I'm just doing what I do. No, judge him. Yeah. Well, so you, you, are you born and bred in New York or is that just where you live now? No, I live in New Jersey, actually. Oh, you live in Jersey? Yeah, but I'm right outside of the city. I'm well, like 15 minutes west of Harlem in Bergen County. So okay. I'm like up in New York. Yeah. Is that where you're from? I'm from New Jersey, yeah. From Jersey? I was born in Pennsylvania, but what I was part? there for like three days. Uh, like it was one of those deals. My mom's from Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Right on the Jersey border in Easton. Oh, okay. You know Easton? I've heard of it. Yeah. I really don't know shit about Pennsylvania. I could curse, right? Oh, no. The, my, I uh, can't? No, we, this is a Christian... Po- no, I'm just oh, kidding. Yes, shit. You can, you know, oh, you, sorry. You can curse. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Um, yeah, you can say whatever you want. Okay. So you, the fam moved to New Jersey as soon as you're born? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, my mom did. Dirty mm-hmm. Jersey. Uh-huh. So what part you said? Bergen County? Bergen County. What's that like? It's awesome. Yeah? Everything looks like Terminator. Really? It's like smokestacks. Power like, lines. It's that part of Jersey. Like you know? very industrial looking? Yeah, it's dirty. It really is dirty. It smells like shit. Really? Yeah. I, I only know like flying into Newark. Newark? I'm right by Newark. I'm 10 minutes away. Oh, yeah. I love Newark. Brick Newark. City. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. It's so beautiful. Really? Yeah. I, I, You've driven through it, right? You've seen it? Yeah, I've just landed and driven through to Pennsylvania. And then, and then I used to, as a kid, I would drive through from um, from Pennsylvania to the Jersey Shore. I would mm. go to Ocean City a lot. Fuck the Jersey Shore. Yeah, well, this was like, yeah, fuck, fuck the Jersey Shore. <laughs> this was in like the early 90s when I don't know if it was like, it was still kind of like dirty and gross. It wasn't as like... The shore? Yeah. The shore is still kind of dirty and gross. Yeah. I mean, Sandy wiped out a lot and they had to rebuild stuff. But Mm. the shore, even when I was in high school, that's like where everyone went to go get their belly button pierced. It's like where they don't card people. Yeah. You know, and get tattoos and shit. Definitely like a lot of like a hookah shell necklace. Puka shell necklace. Wait, no. Puka, yeah. In the 90s it was for sure. Really? Oh, yeah. I thought that was like a California thing. Nah, (laughs) all my puka shells were from Jersey. From Jersey. (laughs) Yeah. Damn, you still got Adam? No, I Shit. wish. I had like a shark tooth one, like <laughs> it was super tight. Nice. Um, so anyway, okay, so how did the fam end up in Jersey? Uh, they're from Jersey. Like my mom wasn't from Pennsylvania. Yeah. It's a weird story. She like got pregnant with me out of wedlock, which mm. is a sin. Mm. So she went to go like get right with God with my like Christian kind of hippie uncle who was going to a uh, ministry school in Pennsylvania. No way. Yeah. And the college is so weird. Like it's like this huge campus, but uh-huh. there's only like eight students and they all wear business suits to to class. It's like a cult. Whoa. My mom took me there when I was like 18 to show me where I was born. Yeah. I was like, this is fucking creepy. That is creepy. Yeah, so she just went to stay there with him and, like, get right with God while she was pregnant or whatever. Was he, like, studying to become a monk or something? Or like, no, to be, like, a pastor, oh, a pastor. or something. Okay. And he's not even a pastor, so I'm not exactly sure what he did. He got, like, a degree in Jesus or something. The degree in Jesus. That's <laughs> yeah. A, a popular degree. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I'm working on mine right now. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've got six degrees of separation to Jesus. Jesus. Oh, no, wow. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so born out of wedlock, does that mean like, do you have dad issues? Do you know your dad? Oh, yeah. I got dad issues. All Come the, on. That's the theme of the show. All Even the, if you have a dad, you have dad issues. Oh, absolutely. I, always, <laughs> I have a dad, though. Oh, you do? Yeah. So you know the guy that like knocked her up then? Well, or? I know that guy. I don't know that guy. Yeah. That guy's a wrestling promoter in Tampa. Like a WWE wrestling promoter? It's like, ex- actually, I shouldn't say, because okay. my hardcore fans will look it up and right. be mean to my dad, right. who I want to get money from one day. Yeah. But no, my mom uh, got married, and he adopted me, so he's my dad. I never yeah. like refer to him as my stepdad or anything. Right. They got married when I was like four. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, so he's been there. Yeah. That's forever. cool. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah, so. Shout outs to dad. Damn, crazy. Uh, how old were you when you met the, the biological one? I never met him. Yeah. I sent him a MySpace message. Really? Yeah. So this is like what, in the in the early aughts? Like, uh, or like the mid-2000s you sent him a message? 
a something. Yeah, really? I don't know. Time is just how did that happen? Like, what, what happened with it? Well, I don't even know if it should be like. Oh no, worries. We can. <laughs> Basically, I was a secret. Like, his family didn't even know about me. Whoa. Yeah. It's oh. some shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I just want money. Right. Give me money. Amen. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. But I, I have a brother and a sister, and I got to... I didn't meet them, but I've spoken with them, so I'm excited to meet them. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh. From that dad. Yeah. No yeah. shit. I basically aired myself out to them. Yeah. Like, they didn't know I existed. Oh, well, how did they react? <laughs> They were like, awesome, we have a sister. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Did um, your mom and her husband that became your dad, mm-hmm. did they have did, you, did they have any kids? Yeah. So, so I got, got two other sisters, have, too. Oh, you have sisters, mm-hmm. too. So that I the, grew up with. And you're the eldest? Mm-hmm. And were you the troublemaker getting your sisters into, like, all the bad shit? No. no? I tried. Why? What? what they're, they're just like I mean I try to like turn them on to weird art shit you know yeah. I'd be like you're boring you have to be cool like watch this Herzog film or something yeah. and my one sister Herzog. got into some stuff you know but my youngest sister is like super like you're weird really she's yeah. like all but she's straight dope. and she, narrow I mean I don't know if I call her straight and narrow yeah. but she's not into the weird stuff right how did you but get but she's into still the weird a weirdo um uh, I don't even know. I think I was always just like counterculture because my parents, I just like, they were super religious. And I was like, I don't want to be like them. Like, I'm going to go like read this book about the devil. And then I got into art and they didn't like the art. So that just made me want to get into it even more. And Uh. then it was just, I feel like I was always in high school. I'm like, how obscure can I get, you know, back in high school where like you were cool if you knew a band nobody ever heard of, you know? So I just kept like digging and digging. Right. And then I just got into to shit what um what kind of religion were they into they were pentecostal what's that about it's like speaking in tongues no way slaying and people in the spirit so i got knocked over by the holy spirit really mm-hmm. L- like that he punched me you felt it yeah dude how old were you 15 16 really and it was crazy too because it was like at a time where i was like do i really believe in god anymore like and like this guy i went to some like youth group thing and like this guy was going around like putting hands on people and i was like when he comes up to me like i wonder what's gonna happen but i was just like i didn't expect it to happen you know Uh and he put his hands on me and i was like blasted like some dragon ball z shit i was like what the fuck really i started crying yeah and like i was like holy shit yeah i fell down i went to the bathroom and cried no shit yeah and so is that like a a holy shit now i for sure believe in god moment well no what is what does that moment do to you makes me believe in telekinesis oh shit dude i think everyone in the room expected it to happen and it happened like really power of the will dude Uh, why were you like the troublemaker of the youth group no. Or, like, why would, Why did everyone no, expect it to happen? Because was it, it was happening to, happening to everyone else. Oh. And everyone there was in this moment, like, you know, full yeah. of God or whatever. And, oh, like, okay. oh, my God, look at the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, oh. he's slaying all these people. Okay. I in, feel like they all mind, just were like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And then it happened. Okay. In my mind, having, like, listened to some of your music and seen your videos, I'm thinking, like, the people in the room are going, like, she needs Jesus. <laughs> this is going to happen to her. I get that one. Yeah. 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 Um, no, I wasn't. I wasn't, like, you know. So so troublemaker. It did, so it didn't yeah. like make you believe in God. It made you believe in the power of like the will m- moving energy yeah. and shit like and that. And then I got into like the occult. Really? Yeah. Cause like, you know, Alistair Crowley was all like power of the will, yeah. will things into manifestation. So I was like, you know, sitting there trying to bend spoons with my mind. How and do you shit. feel about like the whole sim world theory thing? How like, do I feel about yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know. Have you have you been like reading anything about that kind of stuff? Like, well, the, like how, the Elon Musk yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, the whole like we can't be the original species. Yeah, I and, mean, I don't understand why he's so set on believing that. I mean, I think life could be a simulation, mm-hmm. but I don't personally think it is. Or if it is, it really changes nothing about my existence. I mean, of course, I want to know. I'm not one of those people that's like, I don't want to know. I just like let things be. Mm-hmm. Like, I totally want to know. Like, that would be trippy as fuck but i feel like there's really no compelling evidence from what i've read about it to be like this is definitely a simulation it's become an ongoing joke uh among like with my girl and i like we constantly joke about it since we heard the elon musk theory Uh about it and then it's just funny because you brought up manifestation and like pretty much 
anything that happens now that's a coincidence. We're like, we manifested that. Shout out to- <laughs> Made it happen. Yeah, shout out to the Sim World gods. Right. You know what I mean? We like we've we've been uh, we were shopping for like a denim jacket for her, <laughs> and then we went to a fucking YG concert the other night. And as we're leaving, there's a denim jacket like in her size on the ground outside, oh and I like pick God. it up. And I'm like, I'm like, what is this? And I pick it up and I'm like, it doesn't smell like piss. This is great. Let's take it. It's a jean Destiny, jacket. Destiny, dude. Yeah, and I'll, it was like the same one we were looking at online, and we we're like, shit. Sim, you made Sim it World. happen. We manifested that shit. You made it happen. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Aleister Crowley influencing you? Because we, we had another <laughs> artist named Ghostman on here. That, oh, I know him. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's he's cool. Uh, we had a great conversation, and and um, we talked about Aleister Crowley, and then a bunch of his followers like reamed on me for knowing nothing about Aleister really? Crowley. Really? So now you've done your research? No, not really. Uh, uh-huh. But I would love to learn more. Because they were all like, don't fucking talk about Aleister Crowley. You don't know shit about him, bro. And I was <laughs> like, whoa, sorry. You know, I don't know too much either, yeah. to be honest. I'm not some Aleister Crowley expert. But my my little you know stint was kind of short lived, and then I realized it was kind of stupid. Like I think the occult is really dumb. People go through that phase, though, that. right? Yeah, totally. That's like a late teen, early twenties. Yeah, well, it's thing. a power trip. That's yeah. what it was for me. You know, this idea that like oh, because especially coming from Christianity, where all you hear your whole life is like you're worthless, you're full of sin, you're powerless. Like like you know, like you have you are nothing and. Pray to God and maybe he'll forgive you. So to go from that right. to believing in like, I can will things into reality. Like I'm a God, you yeah. know, like I'm the God of my own universe. Like huh. that's what really attracted me to it, you know? So I was, it's a power trip for sure. It, it, it gave me really good self-confidence. So I'm grateful that I got into it for a second, but it didn't take me that long to realize like, this is stupid. I mean, it's almost as stupid as Christianity. To right. me. Like, why do we have to put on little capes and talk about demons? Like, and I totally still believe that like, maybe you can will things into reality, but I don't understand all this ritualism. We don't need all these stupid demons and symbols and stuff. Like, I feel like if anything, it's just obscuring the true potential of this sort of thing you know right like there's actually parapsychologists who are doing like legit research into telekinesis and all this other shit you yeah, know yeah i might sound like a nutcase but no, i'm, I'm interested in that stuff from a science perspective you know i don't think there's any point in getting into it from like a spiritual one because there's, we're not going to get anywhere it's dumb right. like i hate all that witchcraft occult shit it's just i mean i like the imagery though obviously i mean in my videos and you know right. I'm, I'm into all that wicked shit but but only as like an aesthetic you know right 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 i feel that mm-hmm. i always wonder like if it had been the opposite where you were raised in sort of like uh an agnostic or atheistic family if you would have like been driven to learn more about <laughs> christianity yeah you know what i mean <laughs> like i was i was raised a pretty hardcore catholic and then okay. and now i've just like gone fully atheist you know what i mean because mm-hmm. i'm like oh, i did that didn't Good work for, for me you. like whatever and it seems like I, i'm not i don't know if you were consider yourself an atheist but it's I like do. okay so there you go it's like it almost is like if you grow up in a hardcore religious family, it like pushes you away from it in the totally. long run, right? Totally. Just like people who have parents who smoke cigarettes, right. they don't smoke cigarettes, you know? It's like I feel like a lot of kids just want to do the opposite of what their parents do. Like I know kids with like hardcore drug addict parents and they are like straight edge, you know? Right. I see it a lot. I mean, a lot of people emulate their parents too, but I, I think a lot of kids just like grow up and they're like want to get interested in whatever their parents don't do right that's why i think the next generation of kids are going to be like totally tattoo-less because our <laughs> generation is so tattooed they're going to be like you guys are a bunch of fucking yeah. dorks i'm not getting any tattoos yeah totally yeah i wish i was smart enough to have not smoked cigarettes because my dad smoked cigarettes my grandfather smoked. everyone mm-hmm. smokes cigarettes all my male influences smoke cigarettes i ended up smoking cigarettes for 15 years really yeah damn shout and you quit out. yep shout out to quitting wow help yeah. me give me some of that you know what uh, do you have any like ocd tendencies yeah Okay, I, there is an app called Quit It. Uh huh. It's just called it's just Quit It, straight up one word, and okay. it's all numbers that just like count that down to the minute that you've quit. Uh huh. It tells you how many cigarettes you've not smoked. I got something like that, dude. That for me did it just because like I get so OCD with numbers. I'm mm. like, and I don't want to break streaks, mm. and so that really helped. And okay. The first year was, the, the, I mean, the first really like six weeks were the only hard ones, and then yeah. it's just kind of like a willpower thing. Well, I've quit before. The longest I quit was three months. Yeah. And two, then I just two years for me. 
Wow. Yeah. Good for you. So tell me about growing up in Jersey besides going to like youth groups and stuff like that. What was your school like? Well, Diverse I went to or? Christian school too. Oh. Like the school I went through from K to eighth grade was super small classes. Like, I don't know, 20 people in a grade. And like, Pentecostal then? No, or that no, one just, was uh, Lutheran. Oh. Lut- so it was more like like uh straight laced you know yeah. like the they they were affiliated with a church too yeah. i didn't attend that church but their church was like you know old people singing hymns and shit right. but the church i went to had an electronic drum kit and Whoa. a backlit crucifix like it was the cool church you know was but like my a, school was more straight was it like a mega church yeah. mm, it had those vibes but yeah. if the mega church was not in the mega church it was actually the church that the jonas brothers were from and their dad was my pastor and i hung out with the jonas brothers all the time get out <laughs> yo i was tight with the jonas brothers as fuck whoa yeah that's crazy i know so, my mom sold pictures of me with them to tmz and didn't give me anything sold pictures of you with yeah. them to tmz yeah because we this? had all these pictures of like childhood pictures yeah how much did she make off that she got like five grand for this one photo Damn. she didn't give me shit oh that's fucked up i was pissed that's funny as fuck though hey I know, shout out nick so jonas weird. he's <laughs> actually kind of like putting out some hits right now is he? Are, yeah they're kind of tight I, i'm like not mad at nick jonas right now okay yeah. i gotta check him out yeah yeah and hey, what a hunk too you know what i mean Good yeah, he's cute yeah. Shit. call me nick remember me i babysat you a few times <laughs> Remember? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, what were you into as you were in K through eight at a Lutheran school? Like, were you doodling and into arts and stuff like that? Even yeah. from an early age? Yeah. yeah. I think that's what really made me get into art ultimately. Because when I was a kid, you know, we all drew. And then I was the one that was like, oh, she, Bethany's good at drawing, you know? So I was like, yeah, that's my thing, you know? Right, right. So, like, I quickly prided myself on being the kid that was better at drawing than everybody else. And then that just kind of became my thing. Were you better at writing than other people, too? Mm, I I was pretty good. Like, Can't did you, lie. Did you start with poetry very young, I mean? Uh, yeah, actually, I did. Yeah. I read the abridged version of Ivanhoe in first grade. I, don't I was even know so what that proud. Is. It's some classic. That sounds hella smart. It was a bridge, though. Remember those ones that they had, like, it was, like, simpler language with okay, pictures yeah. for kids. But yeah. it was still thick, you know? Right. It, was, it had to be 100 pages, shit. Hey. Double space, but you know. Damn. Come on. Look at you. And so yeah. did Ivanhoe start inspiring you to write your own poetry? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to... I definitely wrote poems since I was little. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But... I- I think that happens with a lot of rappers. You start at a young yeah. age. Yeah, yeah. That I talked to, at least. Yeah, I was always into reading, writing. Yeah. For sure. Did high school stay Christian schools, too? Yeah, I, I transferred to another school. That was a Calvinist school, not Lutheran anymore. What's that? It's based on the teachings of John Calvin, who was this guy that believed in predetermination. That's like his main thing. And predetermination is the belief that everybody is destined from birth to either go to heaven or hell. Whoa. So it's kind of like this like manifest destiny thing, you know? It's like... That seems kind of dark, because what if you're one of the people that's like... The destiny is to go to hell. Yeah. Like, no matter how good you are. I mean, it just confirms God's an asshole, you know? No shit. It's like, what? so we really don't have free will, or we do, but it's just been determined since my inception that I'm going to go to hell? Like, what? I don't fucking... Right. Not to get into a total, like, shitting on God conversation, but as a kid, the thing that always confused me most about Catholicism was just hearing him being like, I am a spiteful God, and if you ever love any other God, like, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I was just kind of like... Yo, why is God so petty in Catholicism? Such like, he's a dick. Real crazy. Like. But actually, that's my favorite God. Like, Old Testament God, he was dope. Like, kill all the women and children, uh, burn it to the ground. Right. Like, I would, I would. You're a pillar of salt. You're yeah. a pillar of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's yeah. a pillar of salt. Yeah. I would fuck with that guy, but then the New Testament comes and everything just gets warped, you know? Mm. It's bullshit, and now I'm supposed to believe God's some altruistic being. He's more convincing when he's just straight up a dick, you know? Mm. Then I'm like, okay, I believe it, you know? You're, like, fucking evil, but you chose some people, and these are your people, and you rep for them. Right. But he was kind of mean to them, too. I mean, come on. Every time they did anything, he's like, 40 years in the desert. 40 more years, like, Jesus. But I, at least those people live to be, like, 200 or some shit, so. You know, so 40 like years is just, like, a time little. Time out. Right, it's just, yeah. like, nothing. Yeah, shit. That's, like, having a bad teenage episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Interesting views on that. I'm down. Uh, 
so high school is is sounds even weirder, kind of like a weirder school than K through eight. Yeah, it sounds weirder, but they were actually way more liberal. Oh, like okay. we had, uh, I remember my theology teacher because we had Bible class every other day. Yeah, she was a woman, and uh-huh. I feel like that would like she was a woman minister too at her own church, and okay. like my old school like that would be unheard of like people actually would say like women cannot be ministers you know uh-huh. and she also believed in evolution but she believes in like she believed that the creation story was like a metaphor so mm. she was like one day isn't a literal day it's like a million years mm. which is so stupid i think it's even stupider than like believing in the seven days because it's like how are you going to pick and choose from a fairy tale like right. you might as well just choose to believe in like the brother's grim or something if right. you're going to have not a literal interpretation of it like anything can be a metaphor for life right but regardless it was like cool to be around people that like could say that kind of thing yeah Yeah, exactly and we had like debates about gay marriage and stuff and like in my other school we would never like what was her take on gay marriage well, not her, but oh. I had a history teacher that was, like, kind of... I mean, he wasn't openly for gay marriage, but I remember some debates with him in our classes, and he, he definitely, like, played devil's advocate with a lot of these super Christian kids. kids. Yeah. And that was cool. Like, that was when I think I was first exposed to more, like, open-minded people. Right. For so, sure. Really? So, like, most of most of the youth that seem, you're around people that are very, like stringent beliefs and like Mm -hmm. unwilling to bend Mm -hmm. and internally you're having this dialogue with yourself like some of this doesn't make sense to me or what Mm, well when i was like 16 around the time i got slayed by the holy spirit right we had to read uh paradise lost by milton yeah you remember did Mm -hmm. you have to read that in high school i believe i had to read paradise lost but you can go ahead and like give me a quick update yeah well it's basically the story of how like satan fell from grace because you know originally he was lucifer the light brain yeah. He was like one of the top angels. Right. And he's a and fallen then, angel. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of the whole story of that happening. Mm-hmm. And we were reading it. And I don't know why I was just thinking like I got so hung up on this idea like, OK, God created everything. Mm-hmm. Right. And he is everything. But how could evil possibly exist Unless God also created that Mm -hmm. and is partially that, you know, how could God create something that's not him at all? If he really is the essence of everything and there was nothing before him, Mm -hmm. then evil couldn't have just come from some vacuum. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. he had to have created it. Mm -hmm. And that makes no sense. Right. And it just like totally I was just thinking about that. And then that just like confirmed for me. I just, you know. I was just like, fuck this. This doesn't make any sense. I started thinking about that, and I started thinking about everything. I'm like, this is bullshit. Yeah. And then I started power tripping on the occult, and then, like, my thing in high school was being, like, the fucking... Everyone, like, thought I was a lesbian, and uh-huh. I was pro-choice and stuff, and I was really into being this, like, you know, counterculture girl. Like a button pusher, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think I still am that. Right. That's so interesting that that was your the the my thought process on getting out of religion as a mm-hmm. kid was, was similar to that in that I, I wasn't going I wasn't quite as um, logically philo- philosophical as that mm-hmm. but my whole thing was like learning about the Crusades uh, uh, and going Evil. like I'm going like you grow up in Catholicism thinking like being taught like this is the religion like everyone else has the fucking wrong religion mm-hmm. and like our religion is the best and and like our shit don't stink Catholicism go Catholicism and <laughs> then you read about the Crusades and like how all these millions of people got killed because of manifest destiny and, and like conversion. yeah to- like all Not this even crazy just shit like a gunshot yeah just like, like we gonna hang you upside down and saw it's like you crazy shit and I'm going like wait. <laughs> If they're doing this in the name of God, like God's kind of cr- oh, like this dick. is fucked up. I was mm-hmm. like, how, how, I was like, people are so evil, and I, and then I realized, like, oh wait, like no, everyone's just humans, and humans are fucked up, and this shit probably none of all of his bullshit. Yeah, it was, but it's a similar thought process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, when you start figuring out like these things about good and evil. Yeah, um, yeah. totally. And it's not just Christianity either. Mm. I think all religions are evil. I don't fuck with none of them. Man, I'll tell you, I I, I don't want to go as far as to say they're evil. I just think that like they if they help you, that's good. 
if they don't help you, but do they really help anybody? I, I, some people n- need that. Some people have that void, and it helps them fill that void. And if you it helps fill you fill it with philosophy, b- but that's that is their philosophy. And if it fills you with a philosophy, if it fills that void for you in a way that doesn't harm others, go for it. But once you start like treading on other people's shit, I'm kind of like. Mm. You I lost me with that one. I don't think so. I don't agree. Yeah. I don't think religion helps anybody because even if it might help you like overcome whatever personal vices or flaws you have mm-hmm. as a person, mm-hmm. I think that the potential for something else to help you is so much greater. Mm-hmm. Like in religion, to me, all of it is just crude philosophy. Mm-hmm. If you replace that with like an actually good, wholesome philosophy, I feel like people, I feel like religion just kills people's potential. Honestly, Mm -hmm. like it makes you kind of limit yourself to like a set of rules and beliefs. And it's just like, this is what's true, you know, and people don't like venture outside of it and don't like think for themselves. Even something like Buddhism or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't see the fucking point. Like, right. it crushes egos and just like destroys people's potential to be great. That's how I see it. I, I would tend to agree with that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like I, uh, I could see both sides, and I'm not gonna say like either one of us is right or wrong. Like you know, I'm right. I guess, yeah. My whole <laughs> thing is like my whole thing, my whole philosophy. I guess is just like to each his own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which uh, you know, I don't want to say that um, to, to the guy who told me I don't know anything about Al- Aldous Huxley or Alistair Crowley. I'm sorry, not mm-hmm. Aldous Huxley, Alistair Crowley. I could see the merits of both sides uh, uh, um, of just like yes, I do agree that to an extent it's obviously um, what is it the sedative of the masses? No, what do they call it? religion it's like the sedative is it the sedative it's it's something it's the whatever of the masses that like keeps people calm and fucking in line Mm -hmm. um but at the same time like i have met people who are like have been total fuck-ups their whole life that like rededicate themselves to god and like that's the weird thing that they needed to like to help them you know what i'm saying and and more power to you Uh, for me yeah it doesn't work and, and i do i do come from a school of thought where like uh man created god and not vice versa you know right. what i mean i think that it's as much of an instinct for us to like uh need something to explain death to us or explain the fact that like we have all this brain power that we have nothing to do with and so it's like you trick yourself into thinking that you're uh bigger than or that you your life or being matters more than it actually does and how do you explain that oh be- because god like it's a, this crazy <laughs> logic jump you know mm-hmm. what i mean that like doesn't sit well with me but like i said I, I, i'm kind of a per, i'm kind of like a hands-off everybody else's shit type of guy where, where like to me i've never understood why i've never understood why abortion or gay marriage or these things are such huge debates because i'm like right. none of it affects me like and if it doesn't affect you why do you care like if you don't like abortion don't get a fucking abortion mm-hmm. you know what i mean don't stop so-and-so from doing it or if you don't like gay marriage don't fucking marry another person don't marry a, a, someone of the same sex like right. it has nothing to do with you right and that's how i feel about religion like it doesn't have anything to do with me because i don't give a fuck about it and there it is you know i guess the way i see it yeah. is like you know like I see it as, like, religion just, it turns people into, like, your friend that you see doing okay, Mm -hmm. but not doing awesome things that you know they could do. Mm -hmm. And that, like, hurts me, you Mm -hmm. know? And when you have a friend that you see living that way, I feel like you try to talk to them, like, hey, you have so much potential, like, I want you to do all the things you want to do. And I just feel like humans are the fucking shit like humanity has done so many awesome things and i feel like everybody has the potential to do awesome things and religion like you said it's like the i think it's the opiate, opiate of the masses, masses. that's what I, that's, yeah, what I and that's how i see it it's like a drug maybe yeah. it helps some people and keeps them sedated in the mm-hmm. sense that you know it, it keeps them from doing whatever bad things they might otherwise be doing but like it turns them into these mediocre do nothingers like i feel like people kn- can do so much more and like it i do like want to like intervene because i feel like i'm team human like i'm fucking like want to pick them up and shake them and be like go fucking like do something awesome like you're gonna be dead soon and there is no afterlife agreed now that you put it that way i know the type of people that you're that you're talking about uh, uh, of like the ones that uh, are so stringent about the rules applied to them by their mm-hmm. religion that they're scared to go out and do things that they actually want to do. Right. Like, yeah, totally. In that case, like, you're right. It's a debilitating thing. And I guess mm-hmm. the, the 
the people that I was thinking of and talking over, like, you know, friends that have been addicts or, or, um, uh, just, you know, criminals, fuck ups that like find God. And then and what it if turns they it found out. Socrates instead? Like right. how much cooler would that be? You could still fix your life and become a fucking awesome right. school of, I agree. Philosophical thought. I agree. But humans are nuanced and there are different, well, different mm-hmm. levels of intellect in every person. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Oh, this is getting this is getting good fast. Uh, um, so. just, I fucking love people. Like I want everyone to be smart and not succumb to dumb ideologies. You know, I want them all to just like fucking think about simulation theory and think about all this crazy shit that they could be thinking about. Right. You know, like and not instead about of just like they're well, go to hell. yeah. Right. Yeah. Or even, you know, I mean, mediocre people or people who don't really believe in religion that much Mm -hmm. or just like accept it at face value. Those people bother me more than the extremists, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you really believe this? Like, or you just tell yourself you do because everyone else does or your family did. You know, it's like, I feel like if if you really believe in God, like you should dedicate your whole life to it. You Uh should be in the jungle fucking telling people about jesus who would never hear about him you know mm. otherwise fuck you mm. you're a fake ass christian like that's be, how i see it be a zealot what you yeah like be a zealot? You better be like fucking blowing up abortion clinics and shit <laughs> well we do not promote that on kind of meat so don't do that <laughs> don't do it uh, um unless you're a real christian then you would. so as you're going into your teens and you're and you're kind of like finding uh, these philo- finding this perspective out mm-hmm. and, and kind of becoming the woman that you are today, what sort of music are you listening to? That's that's like, uh, and what sort of art are you into? And and how is your mind and creativity expanding in that sense? Well, there's this one band uh, that really like changed the course of my life. Corn? I swear to God, no, corn oh, okay. is important. Cor- she's wearing a corn sweatshirt. Um, Corn sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, this band Rasputina. Have you heard of them? I've heard of Rasputina, but I don't I'm not familiar. They're awesome. Okay. Well, there's it's really one woman. The okay. other members have rotated. Her yeah. name is Melora Krieger. Okay. She toured with Nirvana, like played cello with them. It's it's cello music. And uh, sometimes they have a drummer. Uh-huh. But it's like rock, like they plug it into pickups and use distortion. Yeah. And this lady Melora, like her lyrics are so awesome and like they all kind of reference historical events uh-huh. and just like weird shit. Like she is smart as fuck. Yeah. She's a genius and yeah. she writes all the music. She's like like to get people for the band she was posting at Juilliard like she's a serious cellist like right. it's like kind of rock music but she's got solos that are like fucking nuts like right. and it's not corny either like some of the songs don't have any distortion it's just like pretty classical music but it's fucking trippy how'd you Weird. find out about it Oh, oh, some boy that liked me put him on a mix. Mm, yeah, nice. yeah. The first song I heard was called "Hunter's Kiss." Yeah, some of the Rasputina fans might know about it. But anyway, I was like doing terrible in school. I was depressed about like all this religion shit. I was like doing so bad in school, and I had always been a good student, you know. So like my parents were just getting on my ass. They thought I was doing drugs. I was grounded every other day. But then I found this band, and I was like, "Yo, like this bitch is smart as fuck. Like I want to be this bitch." So then all of a sudden I just like got into history. Like I started doing all my homework. I was like, this shit is fucking awesome. Like, really? Yeah. Like they really changed my life. I like wrote her a letter and told her all this. Cause like, well, how old were so you when you wrote the letter? <laughs> like last year. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Did she respond? Yeah, she did. That's fucking tight. And, she, and I sent her my music too. And she said she liked it. That's I was dope. like, dude, this is fucking. Yeah. So you heard it here first. Look forward to the buttress Rasputina collab 2017. <laughs> I wish you never you know. Never know. But hey, yeah. manifesting. Sip gods. Yeah. Listen, I don't even feel like I'm worthy, honestly, not to talk nah. down on myself. Oh, but she's like that. my hero. You right. know, it's like I don't even want. I just want you to exist separately from me forever. I just right. Well, I'm sure like you, I'm sure that you've experienced like meeting heroes before that just don't live up to the, like what oh, you yeah. wished. It's like so much better to not meet your heroes right. most of the time. Right. I'm yeah. sure she's as amazing in person. I would love to meet her, but you know, I don't even feel like I'm worthy to make music with this woman. Right. So she's that's amazing. her. So she turns your life around and you start mm-hmm. concentrating on school and then what yeah. are you like a grade A student all of a sudden? Yeah. Get out. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. But you know, I always had been one in the past. So just, it wasn't like. Oh, I went from like failing my whole life 
And so, you know, like, I was always a really good student. Right. But then, yeah, in, like, ninth and 10th grade, I just started to plummet, like, dramatically. I just didn't care, you know? You are just, just unhappy with where you were, at, like, yeah, uh, just, with the school, but then were you bored as well? Like, was it too easy? Yeah, I think it was, no, it wasn't too uh, easy. I think it was hard, yeah. you know? And I was just like, oh, what's the point? I'm not interested in this material. Like, I don't, you know, I was, my family life was like, Bleh. Yeah, I'm I curious about your family life because if you were in these religious schools that you clearly didn't really believe with the mm-hmm. believe in the ideologies, but it sounds like maybe mom was forcing it upon you. I, I don't yeah, want to make too many Yeah, my parents were super strict. Yeah. yeah. So how how was that? Were you rebelling at home? Oh yeah, and totally. Always grounded or like what was it? Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Always grounded. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I would try to seek out things that were forbidden, obviously, but I wasn't like heavy into drugs or anything. Yeah. I mean, I definitely did drugs, but I wasn't like out of control i mean i was barely wasn't even allowed to leave the house so i couldn't be if i wanted to you really? know but yeah. i definitely yeah like i was just so i hated my parents around then and i think that's what really made me do poorly in school like my home life was just a mess they just thought i was addicted to drugs and every time i come home they'd be like you're high and blah 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 and they're so much cooler now they're so much chiller like yeah. so i'm not trying to shit on my parents i love them both but right. it, it was it was bad it so. was just rough at that time yeah totally right so yeah i was so rasputina turns it around for you in high school <laughs> yeah. and then and then do you you graduate high school and what do you decide to do uh i went to art school yeah <laughs> That's rad. Where did you go? I went to Savannah College of Art and Design. In Georgia? For one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be an animation major. I just want to say real quick, Mm -hmm. she and I were talking about Savannah today. So this is another similar manifestation. The porn sweatshirt. You were talking about porn earlier. I'm about to go buy a lotto ticket. Savannah. You should. But if you win, you got to split it with me. I don't know about that. Dude. (laughs) 70-30. You tell your mom to give you some of that Jody (laughs) Porter money. (laughs) Damn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, So what's art school like? Like moving away from home, Mm -hmm. what's that like? Just a new world of freedom for you? Oh, hell yeah. Do you start to blossom? Cocaine, dude. (laughs) Woo! Yes. So much cocaine. In Savannah. Hell yeah. Really? It was yellow down there, too. Really? Does that mean it has not been stepped on? I don't even know know because that was my first i mean well i did it in high school a bit actually Mm -hmm. but uh, in college i don't even know honestly if it makes it better or worse yeah i heard that pink means it's really good but i have no idea what yellow means Hmm. but it worked shit so leave us a comment on youtube if you know if uh yellow cocaine is cocaine i always was told not to eat the (laughs) yellow snow but (laughs) maybe yellow cocaine is better i have no idea uh me neither um so you start hanging around artists and doing coke yeah that's tight well i was hanging around artists in high school too you know my clique was kind of like the artsy kids you know i mean a lot of them were still christians we weren't all i mean but some of them weren't like you know some of my friends were like shooting dope in high school which was crazy for my school that was like what did you what have a preferred medium in high school or was it kind of like doing whatever the assignment was yeah no i was into i was in um i was really into painting that was my thing and Mm -hmm. so i went to art school because i wanted to be an animator Uh i was like so determined to be a 2d animator Uh um but then when i went to savannah i quickly realized that that school is more of like an industry school they kind of prep you to get like an industry job meaning what like like meaning to get hired by Disney yeah. or Pixar okay. or something, yeah. which is like great, you know, but like, I think I realized quickly, like, I don't want to, cause you know, they would like give you assignments and not just like tell you what to do or what, like, you know, techniques to utilize. They would tell you what to draw too, mm. like stuff like that. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, mm-hmm. I want to like draw whatever I want. If you want me to shade it using this technique that we're learning about, fine. Like mm-hmm. I get it, but it's like, you're going to tell me exactly what to draw too like Mm. fuck this Mm. so it's like i'm gonna go to like a cooler art school so i transferred to the most pretentious art school in the fucking country school of the art institute of chicago Mm -hmm. i don't know if you've heard of it i have yeah where people like pee on each other and shit so that was the one extreme to another it was it was crazy what were (laughs) what were the differences in in kind of um the 
the students, the student body? Oh, completely different. Right. I mean, SAIC is all kids who, it's like the other end of the spectrum, and it's also bad. Like, it's like kids who are like, I make art, but really, I'm the art. You know, mm. I live the art. Like, right. a lot of these kids didn't even do shit except take pictures of their friends on disposable cameras. I, I kind of um, have a natural inclination to hate people like that. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I hated them, too. I was an art school bully. Yeah. I told people that i hated their art all the time mm-hmm. i didn't have that many friends like mm-hmm. i was a bitch and i don't think i should have been because now i feel like a lot of those kids went on to work for like vice and shit mm. and now i can't get into them They're that's like, so funny don't interview this bitch that's so funny yeah well, uh this rapper grouch i don't know if you know grouch he, no. he had this song you ain't artsier than me and it always resonated <laughs> with me because because i've always just looked like a fucking dumb jock but like i consider myself no, pretty well you read got edge. Think, hey thanks yeah. it's just a beard it's the denim jacket it's just a beard that's a, yeah the denim it's the outfit the denim jacket with the sweatpants it's like a clashing lifestyle synergy mm-hmm. you know what i mean really did, puts an edge on me but no I, I like those type of kids that are like no man like i'm the art you know that <laughs> shit annoys me to no end because i feel like you can be an artist and still be like a normal person that you can converse with and you don't have to like talk about crystals and shit you i know don't I mean? know Ugh. so anyway get me started on crystals um so what kind of art i mean if okay so you go with a very practical idea of i want to be an animator and then you go to this school that's totally left-wing probably right. cuckoo well when i transferred yeah. to it was with the idea that i wanted to switch over to film uh, i wanted to be a filmmaker okay i learned that like i, just, I mean i took some animation courses yeah. there too because i wanted to do it more of like as like a minor yeah but yeah i realized quickly i don't have the patience for it to yeah. make the kind of animations i wanted to make and maybe one day i still would make but that, it's that, like drawing frame by frame mm. like if i want to make a good film it's going to take me like five years right and like i'm just not that kind of a person i need more immediacy i think art school teaches you that you go in with one idea of what you want i, I went mm-hmm. to photo school with, mm-hmm. with the idea of like Which uh, one? uh brooks institute of photography it just shut down in santa oh, barbara shit. yeah right but right before i got there it got bought out by um uh Kanye West. No. Um, <laughs> ITT Tech. Oh, so it became shit. like a damn tech school, basically. It was a very lucrative, uh, not lucrative, um, prestigious photo school before that. Okay. Anyway, I went in with the idea of like, oh, I want to, I want to like, be a snowboard photographer because I love snowboarding. <laughs> I just want to travel the world snowboarding. Get those lens flares, yeah. Bruh. And then I went and I was like, oh, snowboarding photography is a joke. Like, I want to uh, do yeah. w- way cooler shit. What do you want to make calendars? Right, exactly. I was like, I want to like do way cooler shit than this, but I just didn't know because I was a small town <laughs> kid that just like art of taking pictures. Yeah. Anyway, so um, you switch over to film in Chicago, mm-hmm. and w- w- what's the what's the coursework like? Is it just like well, do whatever the fuck you want? Yeah, basically. Really? I yeah. mean, that school doesn't have majors. You choose whatever range classes you want to take they have a few like you know if i wanted to take advanced film techniques you got to take like an intro or another intro you know so there was prerequisites to get into more advanced classes and Uh like you know basic science requirements and stuff Uh but overall you could just kind of choose whatever you want and that's why there were so many fucktards at that school Mm. that were just like you know pottery class then i do this like eastern meditation class and then like you know yarn making yarn sculptures Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. people just took the most random classes to Together and just like I'm an artist, like I do it all. Right. I was like, whatever. And now all Flip of them it. make so much money selling fucking no, essential they oils. Don't. They they sell so many essential oils. <laughs> no, Hell <laughs> no. Those kids haven't done shit. Really? Mm-hmm. So did you like it there or no? I loved it. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> it was fun. Well, you know, in Chicago, I I like uh, my friends that were there were yeah. like they're like me. There's some haters, yeah. so we were all some haters, yeah. and like we had a crew and we were strong, and we were all like we're gonna like make the real art, like and like I um they were in the free dress scene, you know, doing like improvisational. What my one roommate he was he did like noise music, improvisational like yeah. electronics, but he would be playing with like you know like Fred Lomberg home and shit, like people that play with Peter Boatsman and stuff, like uh-huh. good free jazz music. I was hanging out with like sixty year olds, getting high with them and talking about art and shit. Like yeah. we were like the cool like we make art here thing. Like we were developing sixteen millimeter in our basement and Whoa. like doing optical printing. Like yeah. it was all like black and white brutalist film. Like we were like the 
nerdy, but like we do drugs and listen to free jazz people. Yeah. So I had like, you know, all these friends outside of school too. Yeah. And like I had access to this school where I had all this cool equipment. There was, I was in like an analog synthesis classes when I like started to get really into sound and stuff, you know, like yeah. I was on some nerdy ass shit and it was fun as fuck. What's that like just a course on Moogs? Huh? The, the no. analog well, synthesis? Well, we had an thing? emu synthesizer. Oh, okay, yeah. It was huge. It was like the size of this wall. Oh, no I mean, way. Yeah. That's and I sick. was just like, yeah, like patching it up, fucking yeah. making noise music. I put out an album that I recorded just on that. It's on Nihilist Records if anyone wants to buy it. What's it called? It's called Structural Stabilization of An Historic Barn. How, wow. How long ago was that? 2011. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's sort of funny how um, if you know about film and, and light and stuff like that, it kind of translates uh, pretty easily over to audio stuff because mm-hmm. like, if you're thinking about your lights and dark channels and a histogram on, and when you're doing color correction or something, it's the same as like your treble exactly. on your bass kind of in, in an EQ. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's pretty easy to like pick both of them up if you find out, if you figure out one of them first. Totally. Right. I feel like there's a lot of parallels yeah. between like correcting a film image and yeah. mixing an audio song. Like, well, how, totally. how did you figure out that you could rap? Uh, well, I used to always rap other people's verses Who? in the shower. Who? Lil' Kim. Lil' she Kim. And Biggie. Those yeah. were the ones that I loved to rap in the shower. Yeah. And, you know, I sound ridiculous, but I was like, you know what? I could, I could flow. Shit. Yeah. And then when all the white girl rappers started coming out, I was like, dude, yeah. I could do this and maybe I could make some money. Yeah. And that didn't happen. <laughs> but... Yeah. It will, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? We got to manifest Hope it. so. Gotta yeah, exactly. Yeah. Concentrate, concentrate. Yeah. Um, so what, so like around 2010-ish when the, when the women rappers I, I, th- and I put out my first song in 2012, I think. Okay. So, yeah, that's when Pilgrims by the Millions came out, I think. Shit. 12 or 13, so around then. So yeah. I think it's been like three, four years now. That I've been doing it. But yeah, it was like when they, Krayshawn and all them came out. Shout out Krayshawn. Yeah, I really like Krayshawn. Friend of the show. Dope. Uh, she's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I, I've talked to her too. I've never met her in person, but she she's lives, dope. She lives a block away from me. She's cool as fuck. So I said hi. Yeah. I so I said, call me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it exactly like that. Call me. Um, do, were you still in Chicago when you were making, that's, that's where. Yeah, I was in Chicago. Yeah. Are you still there or did you move no. back to Jersey? Back to Jersey. How long did you stay in Chicago? Mm, well, I was there for all the college, and then I stayed an extra two years, yeah. I think. What were you doing there for? Did you have jobs and stuff? Yeah. What did you do? What kind of stuff? Do you, what kind of odd jobs have you had? I was a figure model. Oh, okay. For art classes. Yeah. That was fun as fuck. I did yeah. really weird poses, and people loved it. I was nice. a stripper. You were a stripper? Yeah. How's that? Depressing. Really? But until you make a thousand dollars in an hour and then it's the best job ever right right. so you know it's off and on that job is like a roller coaster it, i it's very it's it, I, I used to i used mm-hmm. to date a stripper and mm-hmm. it's a very kind of like different lifestyle like totally. um and just like you know all the f- the friends that she would have that do extras and stuff it's mm-hmm. like it's a very dark world totally and and there are a lot of unwritten rules to it it seems mm-hmm. yeah and it's just scary because i feel like at any point you know girls come in like left and right people fire bitches for the most whatever thing you know because yeah. it was kind of it would be scary because like you know if you had like two bad nights it's like shit my money's getting low and then it's like oh the manager's been acting like a dick to me is mm-hmm. he just gonna like fire me mm-hmm. so you just fire people for no reason right. and shit it's like, like the that Wild West a little bit yeah it's kind of and the girls i mean i've met some awesome girls like I- that was my favorite part of it there are awesome strippers out there right smart ass bitches right and that's the thing it, there are a lot of women that approach it from a very like feminine it's it's not like some like last resort job for some women. It's right. some people it's who approach practical. it from a like yeah, like a f- very feminist outlook of yeah. like this is an empowering thing. Well, that's why I did it. Y- yeah, I, was I mean, say- not from a feminist yeah. standpoint. I actually think it's pretty like anti-feminist okay. to be honest. Like, yeah. I don't see anything empowering about it. Mm-hmm. I feel like. It's a weird subject because, like, female sexuality is so taboo, obviously. Right, and, right. like, people are always like, oh, you should dress like a lady, act like a lady. So in that sense, I think it's empowering that it's like, fuck you. Right. But at the same time, you're at this club and these guys are just talking to you like you're a fucking dog. Right. And you're shaking your ass like a monkey and they throw m- money at you. Like, it's gross. Like, right. I don't think there's anything empowering about it. But it's I think it empowers the individual. Because for me, being up there, it's like, this is so dumb. 
but you're giving me like a thousand dollars to do this yeah i don't give a shit like i could be working at a desk job for 40 hours a week but i'll do this right. but it's like i had to be manipulative and kind of like you right. know betray my own morality to be like you really have to become like a gamer like you have to become mm-hmm. a you're real, like a like, scammer yeah scammer so you're it empowered me yeah. but i didn't feel like at any point it empowers females as a whole i think that sex industry is just like the most misogynistic industry right. ever and i wish it didn't exist you well, know? Was the what was the point that you decided like I'm gonna give this a try? Mm-hmm. When I got really into rap music, really, <laughs> I was listening to Gangsta Boo, yeah. Lil Kim. Yeah. I was like, dude, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna be a stripper. I hate working. Like yeah. it sucks, you know. Well, actually, for a while I worked too and was a stripper. Uh-huh. You know, like I was like, I want to try see if I could do this. So I did. <laughs> did. Did you have like regulars that loved you? No. No? <laughs> Not in Chicago. Yeah. I danced for a bit in Vegas. I had some regulars. Oh, really? Yeah. Would you, like, go out on the weekends? Huh? Would you go out on the weekends to, Chicago, no. or to Vegas or you just move to Vegas? I lived Vegas? there for two months. Oh, how was that? It was crazy. Yeah, I can't imagine. Ve- it was depressing. Really? I thought dancing in Chicago was depressing. There's girls that have just been stuck there forever. Right. And I feel like no one's from Vegas. Like no Vegas is Vegas. like a ghost city. I feel like it's made out of cardboard. Like right. you could pick up the buildings and walk away with them. Like it's like nobody's from this city. There's right. no culture here at all. Like there's no I mean, there's barely art. There's like some shows, but they're all bullshit. Right. You know, like it's right. just a weird, depressing place. And yeah. the sun is too bright. It never goes away. I fucking hate the sun. Was there a breaking point where you were like, I got to stop this? Or was it just kind of like, uh, you just grew out of it? Yeah. I was, yeah. Well, I was staying with friends in Vegas. Yeah. Like, it was a, definitely like a low point. Uh-huh. You know, like yeah. I got fired from a club I was dancing at in Jersey. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, fuck. Like, I had to move to. And I was just like, I'm just going to go to Vegas with my girlfriends because we were all going to dance for like a week or something and i was like eh, i have nothing to go home to i'm just uh, gonna stay here and try to pay off my credit cards or something mm-hmm. and i just like stayed with friends for two months mm-hmm. and did that and then yeah i was like you know what this is i gotta get back to what i'm doing like my music wasn't doing good i was gonna say did you put did you put everything on hold for a minute while you're out there or what? yeah was i was wise? trying to write but i just couldn't i right. was you know i was drinking every time i was at work right. you kind of have to drink i mean you get in trouble if you refuse a drink right but right. you can, there's like fake code stripper drinks and stuff. Right. So, but still, like, it was just like, I was, I was not happy, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Are but you then happy I was, now? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because I'm broker than I've ever been in my life. Right. Like, seriously broke. Yeah. And like, my life is like shit right now, objectively. You gotta, but you I'm gotta, totally so much happier than I was back then like I I would say I am happy like I feel like things are finally starting to happen for me which is exciting right even if it's not manifesting financially like things are happening for me right now and it's super exciting and I'm meeting so many awesome people right and And it feels good I I always feel like it's those times where when you're feeling happy Uh but you're broke Uh it means that like something better is coming Uh, you know what I mean because like if you can tough out the really broke times it means you're just training yourself for like what's to come hell yeah and I've been doing it for years yeah probably my happiest year ever was when I was my brokest year like on unemployment but it's like you trained me for everything that I'm doing now which is and it made it better so I think you know good things good things to come um so when did you move you moved back to jersey yeah. after after vegas uh-huh. and what have you been up to since just working on music yeah pretty much you and film videos. your own videos i don't film them obviously because i'm right, in them right. but yeah one Direct of my them or, mm-hmm, yeah all of them that's so sick yeah and yeah. i've been directing videos for other artists too nice like who um well one of them i'm not gonna say yet but i know they're Pro- big I, I, think I, I think i probably already know yeah uh, yeah so Oh, Vine. Are you like? Do you have like a big Vine following? Uh, is, that, is that like a mm, thing for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the only reason that I'm doing okay at all now, I think, the reason anything good has happened to me over the past few years is because that dumb fucking Vine where I said, don't be mad that I fucked your dad, went viral. How or how viral? Uh, like, ugh, well, that was a crazy... I, I made this song and I did a video in like two days. And you've yeah. seen all my videos. They're yeah. like fucking... Or some of them. They're dark. Yeah, like, they're super dark. Lyrical or whatever. And then yeah. I made this dumb song on valentine's day yeah. i didn't even make it that year it was the first rap i ever wrote and it's yeah. just dumb about getting fucked in the butt and stuff <laughs> fucking people's dads like that's like what all my songs are about. 
<laughs> no. Nice. Well, fucking but you know, rhyme. Yeah, yeah stuff. they do. Yeah. So I just made this song to be like, you know what? I have to make something. I haven't put anything out in months and right. I have some fans and I should do something for them. And you never know. Maybe people will like it, whatever. I'll get a few followers. Right. And then somebody reposted it on Vine and it just started blowing up. And then the video started blowing up, the music video. And I was just mortified and I deleted the video. Really? Yeah. Because I was like, I can't blow up off of this. Vine was like the best A&R forever. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like every song, I was like, you know, I'm like, oh, the next song to blow up is going to be this because there's a viral vine about it uh-huh. you know what i mean yeah it happened for a lot of people absolutely uh-huh. uh, i mean chris travis is a great example uh-huh. like fucking denzel curry is a great example oh, yeah, Fuck, him too. i mean even even bobby Schmurda for christ's sakes is a really vine. yeah bobby Schmurda, that all started because of a vine where he threw his hat in there and started dancing i didn't know that yeah that's a vine um so so were you like prepared for the vine virality though hell like, no like i was depressed but did you start like a <laughs> channel did you start a vine channel after that I oh, had no. a Vine yeah. channel, yeah. and somebody, you know, posted it and tagged me, and I started getting all these followers, and, you know, I left the Vine up, though, because I realized, like, you know, I can't be a total idiot about this. Right. Like, I think I was smart, honestly, even though people say it was dumb to delete the video. Uh-huh. I think it was smart. I left up the song, so yeah. I still made money off iTunes and the track itself uploaded right. on YouTube, but yeah. I took the video down because I didn't want people to see this and think this is buttress. That's like, the, def- the, that is, you didn't want that to define you no right that's smart i think it's yeah i think it it was too a lot of i think a lot of artists get sucked in by that first moment of virality and don't realize that they're one hit wondering themselves right you know what i mean right like if you're and if you're not prepared for that one hit wonderness then like you're fucked yeah you know and that song was nothing like my other songs and people would literally comment like this song's so good why do all your other songs suck like i'm like you know what no this isn't happening like i'm not letting this happen right and it was just it was a dumb song I mean, it's funny. I like it. Like, yeah. people think I hate the song. I don't hate it. But it's, I just hated that people were, like, sending me don't be mad that I fucked your dad messages all day long. Right. Like, inbox full of don't be mad that I fucked your dad. I, like, would, I was so depressed. Really? Yeah. Because I'm deep. I'm a deep bitch. Right. And I'm just like, this is what they want? Right. I'm a joke. Right. They think I'm some weird ass shit. Like, no. No. Well, I mean, that's so self-aware of you to pick that up, though, because, like, th- really think about how many artists have just got, like, rolled with it. And then yeah. they're the don't be mad I fucked your dad artist for the, the rest of their life. I'm not going to be that. I think that was smart to, like, take that down. I think that's a Thanks. smart that's a smart. It feels stand. good coming from someone that knows a lot of rappers and stuff. So. I, mean, I, I mean, you know, I, I, just, okay, I think it's smart. I think that I was think a smart I think it was, move. too, yeah. And, you know, it's like you don't want to, like, pigeonhole yourself into being, like, you know, fucking Mark Paul Gossiter is Zach from fucking Saved by the Bell the rest of his life, you know? Mm. You can't you can't escape that. Mm. If you would have said no to that, maybe he'd be a serious actor. <laughs> you never know. He probably could have done more roles as he got older, though. Yeah. You know? Probably. He tried to go, some people he tried to go Burnett. It didn't work for him, you know? Yeah. But anyway. Um, so what are you working on now? I'm working on a new album. Yeah. Yes. It's How's self-titled it at the moment. No, I might give it a it's name. It's just going to be called The Buttress? Just Buttress. buttress. I'm not The Buttress anymore. Where I'm just Buttress. Where does Buttress come from? <clears throat> well, I thought of it in art history class. Mm. You know buttresses from no. architecture? No. Well, a buttress technically is a structure that supports a wall. Okay. It can, helps keep it up. So if you know Gothic architecture. The, these hands are very soft. They've never built anything. <laughs> so I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. <laughs> you wouldn't have built a buttress, though, <laughs> honestly. Well, you know, like old Gothic cathedrals. Yeah. With those things on the side that come up out of the... Well, it looks like they're coming out, but they're actually just coming up out of the ground. Okay, and, yeah. Yeah, those are called flying buttresses uh, because there's nothing under it. Okay. So it's like got a, you know, empty space under it. And right. so I always thought it would be funny if there was a rapper called, that was the flyest buttress. The flyest buttress. It was buttress. like a joke in my yeah. head. And then like a year later when I decided to rap, I was like, mm-hmm. eh. I actually use that as my noise moniker too, though. So nice. I was the flyest buttress when I made noise music too. Well, the buttress. And then the Twitter handle, Coxbit, where does that come from? I don't know. That's just <laughs> just vulgar. I, so. I think I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Dude, I make up the weirdest usernames. Yeah. Once I woke up after a night of drinking in college, and I went to, like, 
Flickr, uh-huh. you know, that photo yeah, website yeah, yeah. for some reason. Right. And I was logged in as this username, gay people 2011. <laughs> and it was like 2014. So I was like, who the fuck is gay people 2011? Like, who did this? <laughs> and then I'm like sitting there and I did like the lost password, like send an email to yourself. Yeah. And it was me. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? I'm a genius. <laughs> now I use gay people 2011 for like little things, you know, like yeah. where I don't want, I want to make a username. Right, right. It's that's a good funny. username. I, I'm good at usernames. Coxbit, that's great. That is great. <laughs> I love when men tweet me too, you know, like yeah. macho dudes. It's mm. like, <laughs> you said Coxbit. <laughs> 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 um, for, okay, so for people that just listen to our show that are hearing this interview, let's give them like starting points to get into buttress music. So starting tell, points. Yeah. What is it? What is the best first project of yours to check out? Like a good entry level buttress mm-hmm. project. That's hard, honestly, because what's your favorite? Everything I put out, I hate it after a little bit. But that's how you know you're growing as an artist. But yeah. What's the one that you could tolerate for the longest? I mean, Pilgrims by the Millions is the first track I ever put out. Yeah. And even though it's still on that kind of boom bappy sound that yeah. I originally was going with that I've since abandoned. But that you're pretty efficient at. You're pretty, you're pretty proficient as a boom bap rapper, I would say. Yeah, but boom bap is over. It is. I'm not going to be better than Red Man, so... That's... Yo, There's a Dark Side is my favorite rap album. Amazing. Like, top three. Jersey. Top three. Yeah, br- that's, why I, that's the only reason amazing. I know what Brick City is. Hell yeah. Red Man is the GOAT. Or yeah. one of them. I love Red Man so much. Red shit. Man, if you're listening, come do kind of neat. Uh, also, most classic episode. I bet of, he would. I, I, I wish that he would. Like, he really changed my life. Like, Red Man really changed my life. There's that's a dark awesome. Side. Yeah, that's like my, like, that, 36 Chambers and Doggy Styles, those are my, yes. those are my 36 three. 36 Chambers for me, so. The, I have a, I have a uh, cream tattoo. It's like a, car- you do? It's like a carton of you cream. You got the W too? No, I don't have a W. No. I wanted to get a. Don't get the W. I Everyone's got, Wu- got the I got, W. I said I want to get a Wu Tang tattoo with no Wu Tang W. So yeah. it's like a carton of cream that's a dollar dollar okay. bill. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I thought about getting a Killer B. It, I've seen a lot of killer bees. <laughs> I've seen a lot of killer bees. Yeah. Um, okay, so wait, so Pilgrims by the Millions, yeah, that is an, an easy entry level uh, <clears throat> totally, budget yeah. song. It's my first song, and yeah. I think it still captures my essence, even though it's not, you know, I'm not trying dark. to do as yeah. much boom bappy sounding stuff anymore. Right, right. So um, I would say that's a good starting point. And okay. then, like, I would say go from that until, like, my most recent one, right. which will kind of show you, like, what else I've been doing. Because mm-hmm. I think the past three songs i released are like super slow and mm-hmm. brooding mm-hmm. but i'm also not trying to just do that either i mean i've been trying to like find my sound you know because right. like i said like i don't think i mean i love listening to boom bap but i feel like the golden era is over and what's the point in trying to do something that people have already perfected you know right. like i'm not going to be a better rapper than red man and right. that style i'm just not or even if i wanted to be like i don't want to be you know right, like right. he already made something so awesome like right. it's like 20 30 years later now totally. like let's let it go let's make something interesting like so i've been trying to get back into like the noise music which is what i'm still really interested in making you know but try to integrate it with the hip-hop more and so like, like uh death gripsy type stuff or like uh I mean, or, or anti pop consortium consortium like, i don't know who that is oh, no, very rare very mm. rare reference oh, i'm not i'm not cool enough um i'm trying to think of other like noise rap well, that's groups. the thing i don't think there's too many that not a lot. like i mean you know i really like danny oh, brown's new album blackie you know Blackie? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Blackie's sick. Yeah. That's good noise rap. Yeah. Uh, who, what was the one you just said? Well, I was just going to say I like Danny Brown's new album. It's not, like, noise. Like, it's still got, like... It is like, grating, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, like, old school flows, but the yeah. production is very modern. Right. Like, it's really interesting. It's right. weird, you know, like... I mean, I've just been experimenting with a lot of stuff. And Good. also, I've been making, like, dance music, kind nice. of, and nice. trying to incorporate that. Because I made a lot of noise beats, and I think quickly I was like, this is, like, fatiguing to listen to. Right. My noise album is six minutes long, and I feel like that's the perfect amount of time for a noise album. Because you can only, the point of noise is to, like, disrupt, you know? And right. if you just hear, like, <laughs> For more than a minute, you're just over it. It's right. like, okay, my ears are literally tired of this. Like, totally. it's not like 
abrupting me. I just want to turn it off. I've never really been, I've not been someone who's able to like sit through a lot of noise shows either. No. In, in my, I've lived in California a long fucking time and gone to a lot of concerts. You've a lot of noise shows here? I've been, I've been to a few noise shows. Mm -hmm. They're not generally my cup. No. Of tea, but maybe they were shitty when it's done right it can be great <laughs> yeah there's so much shitty noise out there yeah totally. anyway i mean especially people who are into like hardware hacking and stuff mm. people who just aren't like fucking playing like modified fucking toys mm. hasbro toys and shit that's the kind of shit i had to sit through at art school i hate it it's so pretentious mm. but people who actually know what they're doing and make interesting noise music it's like some of the best music i've heard in my life right like katsumoto endo i don't know if you know him I but don't. he's my favorite noise musician shout out katsumoto <laughs> endo yeah hey i follow you on twitter he follows me back now i used to bother him like all what? the time like i love you and he would never answer i'm like this guy hates me and then once i was like dude i love you like can i sample you and he's like yeah He's like, he's like, will you stop tweeting yes, me? Yeah, yes. Then yes. I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> oh, he's the best. He probably still thinks I'm a nutcase, but check out his stuff. So the music that you're working on right now, would mm -hmm. you say you would you say that you're still in the process of finding your voice? Is that what it is then? Or do yeah, you think like you, I, you kind of are understanding the direction and now you're compiling a project? Yeah, that's okay. kind of what's happening. I mean, I made a full project right. and then I was like, eh, I want to rework it. Right. Like, I don't like it totally. So I'm okay. in the process of doing that now, like remaking all the beats okay. and getting better at producing like every right. week because I just spent hours making beats and stuff. Nice. And I think, yeah. I think the finished product is going to be dope. I mean, I'm sure my style will still change from mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's it's so much more interesting than my first album, which was just some, like, B-girl wannabe shit right. in my mind. Like, I hate that album, to be honest. I'm sorry. It's okay. But I think it's a good thing, like you said. It is a good thing. Whenever you make something that people get attached to that mm -hmm. you end up hating, it just means that you're growing as an artist. Yeah. Um, I have a record from uh, almost 10 years ago now that people still tweet me lyrics to. That really? I, 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 like, I literally get, I feel that vomity feeling in the back of my throat <laughs> when I listen to it because... You hate it that much? Well, I, I, did, I had my tonsils in still, so my voice doesn't even sound the same. Like, I, the whole time I'm like rapping really? like this. It, it sounds horrible. Oh my God, can I hear it i mean what's it called I, I don't know i don't even know if it's on you don't internet. know i don't Please. know what it's called but no oh, it, it's terrible and, and people still it. tweet me about it but the point is like when you hate something that much it just means that you've grown as a person yeah totally, you know? totally. Um, but yeah uh, any timeline on that without like putting too specific of a time i'm thinking early next year awesome so it's like coming along yeah and then you got some other big stuff that you've been working on that you're kind of like alluding to on Twitter, but you're probably not mm. allowed to talk to it. Uh, talk well, about I it. Well, I can talk a little bit about it. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Please. Well, I'm in Flying Lotus's new film, Kusa. Kusa. Which yes. is fucking amazing. And, and Flying Lotus is fucking amazing. And I've like, been a fan of him for forever. Right. So this is like a fucking dream. You're in the He's studio where he masters man. his records. Huh? You're in the studio where he masters his no records. Way. Yeah, in that control room you're in. Dude, um, I feel the magic. I knew it felt magical yeah. in here. Yeah, he's so, so talented. So Steve, Steve and uh, Zach Fox, Booty Math wrote yeah. it. Yeah, and he, and there was one other writer. Steve directed it. Mm -hmm. Flying Lotus directed it. Mm -hmm. who, who, uh, and so you're in it, mm -hmm. acting. Mm -hmm. How's that? Awesome. Yeah. I love acting. It was a challenge for yeah. sure. Like I'm not an actress, you know, like yeah. I kind of got the role by some like crazy miracle, honestly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did he like know about the, your music or, or something? Or like well, that? yeah, my one friend had showed it to him yeah. and then um, another friend suggested me to him. Yeah. And I don't want to like talk too much about it's stuff fine. just because I don't no, know what's cool and what's right. not to totally, say. But totally. I, I can definitely say I'm in the movie yeah. and it's really awesome. Great. And Steve is like the coolest guy it's ever. It's premiering at I'm Sundance. I'm so grateful. So it'll be out soon. Hell yeah. Yeah. Are you going to Sundance? I hope so. It'll be, dude, Sundance is going? tight. No, but I've been. It's fucking dope. Hell yeah. Park City is no, like, I'm like 90% sure I'm going unless I die or something. Park City is one of the like prettiest cities. It's like a beautiful, nice. beautiful mountain town. And it's going to be all snowy and it's, shit, right? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, yeah, I'm man. Go skiing on acid. There you, there you go. That's what I'm going to do. And Adderall. Yeah. You'll, no, I haven't taken Adderall for ski, three weeks. I was going to say you'll ski for like 40 days. <laughs> I'll do the other skiing. Yeah, uphill you know what I'm skiing. Saying? Uphill skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, all right. Well, I think that I think we came to. I think we, we did what we came to do. Uh, unless there's anything Hell else yeah. you want to mention, 
No. Follow me on Twitter, Coxpig. <laughs> that was the next thing. <laughs> Watch my, oh, subscribe to my YouTube. That's what I want. Yes. I want YouTube subscribers if you like my videos. One thing that we have in droves is YouTube subscribers. So if you are a subscriber to Kind of Neat, please go to her YouTube channel, which please. is... Please. Uh, but just look up Buttress. Yeah, just look it's up Buttress. It's called Buttress. All her videos on there. Just subscribe. She's got some great visuals, great songs up there. Thank um, you. And I think that's it. We're going to yeah. do a live performance Hell that yeah. you guys will see on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to that, subscribe to Kind of Neat as well. My name is Lee. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition. And you can follow me on Twitter at It's Intuition. You can follow my man, Ben Shim, behind the boards making the shit sound buttery, at I am Database, base with two S's. Follow us as a unit at Kind of Neat. Get us to 3,000 followers. We've been stuck on 2,600 for a while. I want some more. Um, YouTube.com slash Kind of Neat, where you're going to see Buttress perform a uh, a new song you can see our guest from last week jay worthy perform you know some recent standouts being night lavelle rob stone wi-fi's funeral all sorts we've had all kinds of people on lately um what else the website should be up and running a new website should be up and running pretty soon somewhere in the very beginning of the year um we're working on it now have like layouts picked out of and have been diligently working on it so look out for updates and when that happens uh, i will be producing more content some more written articles and stuff like that um speaking of which you i've been working with skull candy um doing some stuff for them so if you go to their site i've been making playlists uh every week like just five songs that i've been listening to that week and then uh also um some articles i've written articles about sesh hollow water boys uh ugly god um who else freaking goth boy click pell so you know some people that we've had on the podcast and that we haven't but it's just a way to go see me um blab off at the mouth in a different way and um what else yeah go to the podcast app search for kind of neat subscribe 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 leave a five-star rating tell us you want to see on the show that was a lot of social media don't forget also to go to patreon but who the fuck cares you're not listening at this point you're just waiting for the beat to start you're already pressing uh mark as played on your ipod on your podcast app but go to patreon.com slash kind of neat if you are a weekly listener give us a dollar per episode helps us keep the lights on that being said That was Buttress. My name is Lee, and this was Kinda Neat.